so good morning to all of you students good morning sir good, good morning sir good morning good morning and uh, we are discussing since uh, six to seven lectures the working stress method <coughs> and limit state method for design of rcc structures so <coughs> as we have discussed assumptions in working stress method here few diagrams are shown let me explain one by one if uh, the front view there is assume there is one beam this is the beam suppose and this beam has uh, some length l right overall depth is suppose d and in front view if you are observing this beam this is the front view so which dimensions you will be able to see you will be able to see the length and depth right the width of the beam <coughs> width of the beam if you want to see then this width can be observed from here right <coughs> if you are standing here and if you are trying to look at this beam then the dimensions which you can observe is width b and the depth d overall depth so if you will look at this section this is the width b and this is the overall depth see this from here i can show here from here to here this is the overall depth of the beam which is generally abbreviated as capital d so this is the side view either you call it as side view or if you will take a section right if you will cut this beam like this then this section <coughs> will be visible and from looking at this section you can get the width of the beam and the overall depth so anyway now i shall start what are the symbols significance of each and every symbol which is mentioned here so in case of beam main reinforcement is provided at bottom at top also i have not shown here the reinforcement but at top also nominal or minimum reinforcement is to be provided because in beams we introduce stirrups <coughs> stirrups are like this and these stirrups are used to resist shear forces whatever the loads are acting on the beam these loads develop some stresses within the beam body because of the development of the stresses this beam gets deformed we call it as bending so bending takes place and when bending takes place tensile forces are developed at the bottom portion of the beam and compressive forces are developed at the top portion of the beam we assume one axis this is our assumption we assume that from the mid of the beam there exists one section or one axis 
which we call it as neutral axis. I have abbreviated it here as NA. This neutral axis is a plane <coughs> where stresses are zero. See this. This is the strain diagram. This is the stress diagram. If you will look at this stress diagram, these diagrams are considered when we design structures in working stress method. If you will look at this diagram, this is a plane or this is an axis which is passing from the mid section of the body of the beam and we assume that the stresses on all the points of the plane of the neutral axis is zero. So this is a point where we are getting zero stresses. I hope it is clear to all of you. So neutral axis <coughs> so neutral axis is an axis where all the stresses which we consider are zero. One more definition is stresses gets reversed from the point and that point is a point which we call it as the neutral axis is passing. For example, if you will look at this stress diagram, see here, this is a vertical line. This is passing to the right side of this vertical line. This is to the left side of the vertical line. From this diagram, it is quite obvious that the reversal of the stresses has taken place within the body of the beam and stresses at bottom are different, are in opposite direction as compared to the stresses at the top portion of the beam above the neutral axis. It is quite obvious from this diagram. So as per, what I have, as per whatever I have discussed, tensile forces are developed at the bottom of the beam means below the neutral axis. So these are the tensile forces. I will abbreviate it as negative. These are the compressive forces above neutral axis. I will abbreviate it as positive. See this <coughs> ordinates. <coughs> compressive force is increasing from the neutral axis or from the point of zero stress to the topmost fiber of the beam. So this is the topmost fiber of the beam and here the maximum compressive stresses are developed which I am abbreviating as sigma cbc that is stress in concrete under bending compression so this ordinate is the value of sigma cbc the same here at the bottom portion as you move away from the neutral axis to the bottom fiber of the beam your tensile forces are increasing and a stage will reach that you will get the optimum tensile forces <coughs> at the bottom fiber of the beam. But remember well, this is the concrete body. So you need not, you should not consider this as the bottom fiber for tensile force. So the bottommost fiber, bottommost plan for the tensile force will be at the level where the reinforcement is introduced. Right? So this is sigma st or modular of uh, ratio is considered. It is sigma st by m. In short, 
maximum stresses are developed at the topmost fiber of the beam and the bottommost fiber of the beam topmost fiber of the beam is considered as this is the topmost fiber of the beam where the compressive stresses are maximum which we abbreviate it as sigma cbc and for calculating design constants we use this values but for maximum tensile forces you have to consider the plane of the introduction of the reinforcement bars and at that plane the maximum tensile forces exist now this <coughs> depth small d is known as effective depth so effective depth is total depth minus effective cover <coughs> see this reinforcement from the mid of this reinforcement to the bottom this is known as effective cover i am abbreviating it by ec so capital d you can calculate capital d is equal to you can calculate capital d is equal to small d plus effective cover small d plus effective cover i am abbreviating it as ec so this is the overall depth which is capital d upon effective cover and effective cover is clear cover plus diameter by 2 because see this this is your reinforcement steel this is your reinforcement steel or reinforcing bars now the bottom of this bars to this bottom this is known as clear cover clear cover why we provide in order to avoid to stop to prevent the corrosion of uh, the steel reinforcement so bottom of these reinforcements to the bottom of this beam this is clear cover plus diameter divided by 2 half of the diameter will be considered so effective cover if you wish to calculate you should know the clear covers so effective cover ec is equal to clear cover plus diameter divided by 2 don't get confused this is not the depth <coughs> i am abbreviating is uh, it has d5 this is the diameter so overall depth is equal to effective depth effective depth plus effective cover and effective cover equals to clear cover plus diameter divided by 2 so in this way the stress strain diagrams are considered now if the neutral axis is at a depth suppose x from the topmost fiber of the beam then it is quite obvious that this is the effective depth small d so small d minus x will be equal to d minus x so there are two three points which you have to remember one is overall depth capital d second is depth of the neutral axis which i have abbreviated as distance x from the top fiber this effective depth is equal to overall depth minus effective cover effective cover is equal to clear cover plus diameter by 2 in this way you have lot of options and um, to calculate this and then by using the similarity of triangles you can calculate lot of parameters and especially the design constants now in this slide i have drawn i can say the section of a beam 
or I can say <coughs> the side view of the beam. If you look at this figure, see this, this is the section of a beam. In this section, the same parameters. So this is now from top to the center of the reinforcement that is effective depth small d. This is neutral axis assumed at distance x, width of the beam as b. And equivalent stress diagram, so this is sigma CBC, the topmost fiber compressive stresses and this is not the bottommost fiber. This is the plane at which the steel reinforcement has been introduced. So maximum tensile stresses will be developed here. So if this is x, <coughs> then effective depth minus x. So this will be d minus x. So whenever <coughs> we design the beam, designing of singly reinforced beam, we have to do some calculations, we have to follow the standard code of practice and we have to determine what should be the depth of the beam. Generally it is 230, 300, 450 millimeters. What should be the overall depth of the beam? It may be in the range of 300 mm, 450 mm, 550 mm, 600, 750 mm depending upon the loading type. Then you have to calculate the steel area AST. Here, cross sectional area of the steel intention AST. What will be the area of the steel and how many number of bars you have to provide at the bottom of the beam? That you have to decide. Number of bars, how you can decide? If you have obtained suppose 500 mm square the steel reinforcement requirement to resist the loads acting on the beam then you have to calculate the area of each bar suppose i have decided to use 12 mm dia bars so what is the area of 12 mm dia bar cross sectional area pi by 4 into 12 square approximately approximately 113 mm square so 113 mm square so four bars you have to use so that 500 mm square area of the steel should be provided so introduce four numbers 12 mm dia bars so how to write this four numbers you can mention or you can mention like this four into means four numbers 12 mm dia bars. Now how to mention in drawing sheets? This is right. You are using high yield strength deform bars like this. So 12 mm dia bars or 4 nos also you can write 4 numbers right nos dot. So in this way Designing of singly reinforced beams or singly reinforcement sections means you have to decide, determine the proper width, overall depth, number of steel reinforcement so that the loadings which are coming on that beam, acting on that beam should be properly resisted. So in this way, <coughs> we have discussed today the few uh, parameters like uh, sigma CBC, sigma ST, modular ratio in case of singly reinforced section and uh, these uh, stress diagrams are used to determine the design constants in case of working stress method. So okay students.